In this experiment, you're going to be measuring constant acceleration in a straight line using the equipment you see in front of you. By now, your instructor should have provided you with your lab instructions and hopefully you reviewed the entire lab before you've started your work. I'm just here to give you a guide as to what all the equipment is, how to operate it safely, and then uh, you're off and running on your own. Before we get started, please make sure you have your proper PPE. As a bare minimum for this lab, you're going to need safety glasses, but your lab may require additional PPE, so your instructor will give you that information. And also, before you start taking anything out of a box or start assembling anything, make sure you are cleaning all of your tools and equipment, including the surface that you're going to be working with. And when you're done and you take everything down, please clean everything again before you put it away, including the surface. So what we have here in front of us is a track with a graded scale. It's a centimeter scale along the front here. We have our photo gates, we have our end stops, we have our feet, we have a pulley attached over the pulley. We have a thread with a hook and that thread comes back to our cart. On the end over here, we're going to attach different increments of 10 gram weights and our cart has a little flag on top and we'll get into that shortly. A little thing to note when you're setting your things, your experiment up, make sure your cart is the last thing that you throw on here. Uh, or not throw on here, the first thing, the last thing that you put on here because it, it tends to roll easily. So don't set it down on the table because it might fall off. Either leave it in its box or if you're going to put it on the table, please put it upside down. That being said, let's start looking at all these individual components. The feet, photo gates and end stops all attach to the track by means of a channel on the end. Each piece has a little square nut. All you do is line up that square nut with the channel, slide it in, and tighten up until it's snug. It doesn't have to be super tight, just snug enough that it won't go anywhere. It's important that you ensure that your, your track is level before you begin. Your car should not move on its own under no load. So you may need to adjust the feet to get yourself level. If you happen to have a leveling tool, you can use that to check, or you can simply put your cart on there. And as long as it doesn't move back and forth when there's no load on the end of the string, you should be okay. The photo gates are equipped with an IR sensor and a little indicator light on top to, so that you can tell whether or not it's actually read the part going by. You may need to adjust the height in order for the sensor to detect. If I pass through, you see the light's not activating, so I need to adjust my, the height of my photo gate down a little bit. Make sure it doesn't come in contact with the cart. As you can see now, I can go underneath. It activates the light as it passes through and the light goes off as it's gone and I'm not making contact anywhere. Something else to note about the cart is that the little flag on top has a specific width and that's important to measure. In this case, mine is two and a half centimeters, but yours may be different. So make sure that you measure that distance because as it passes under the photo gate, the photo gate is actually measuring how quickly that distance passes underneath between on and off. And you're going to be programming that into your data logger. So it's important that you measure that because the data logger needs to know what the width of the piece following under the photo gate is. When you set up the pulley, please try to make sure that it lines up with the hole in the end stop here so that the thread can freely move in and out and over the pulley when the, when the weight goes down. The GLX is connected to the two photo gates by means of a digital adapter that's then connected to the top of the GLX. Please do not make this connection for yourself. Your instructor will take care of that because there's some sensitive pins and the, the parts are hard to come by. When you're ready to run your experiment, you can turn on the GLX with the power button here, push and hold, and you should see an LED come on, and the screen should start to load up. If you don't see anything, you may need to reset it. You can do that by pushing and holding the power button until you see an LED, then you release, push and hold again until you see the LED, and it should power up. If at that point you're still having difficulty, please contact your instructor and they will help out. Now that your GLX is powered up, we're going to follow the instructions in the lab. So the first thing we need to do is scroll down and select collision timer and hit the check mark. We need to set our flag width 
in meters. So you hit the check mark on there and you can manually input it. I already have it input to 0 0.025 because that's 2.5 centimeters. Hit your check mark. Then what you need to do is you need to select table. Sorry, you need to hit home and you need to select the table. And you'll see that velocity one is already shown on mine, but we need to also set up column two to show velocity two. In order to select our columns, we hit the check mark. And we already have velocity one, but if we didn't, we would just hit the check mark again and we would just scroll through the list to select velocity one. And then when we're happy, we scroll over to the right. Sorry, we hit our check mark and we scroll to the right and we select velocity two and we're all set. At this point, we're ready to run. So if you have everything set up, all you need to do is hit the play button and you should see that it's starting a little timer at the top here that's spinning. If you see that spinning, then you know it's recording. And you can just set it down, run your experiment, and when it passes by, you will see data pop into columns one and column two. Okay, we're ready to run the experiment. I have everything set up. I've set my photo gates at 50 centimeters apart, but your instructor will give you instructions as to how you set yours up. I have my data logger logging. I have a 10 gram weight on the end. This is normally a two person job. So normally you would have one person holding the cart at this end and the other person ready to catch the cart at this end so it doesn't smash too hard into the end stop. And please ensure that your weights can go freely down without actually hitting the ground. And then all you have to do when everything's up and running, so everything's logging, you release the cart and off she goes. And again, just have somebody here to catch the cart so that it doesn't go banging all the way back up the track. You will get your readouts from the data logger, record those into your lab notes, and then proceed to add an additional 10 gram weight and continue on in 10 gram increments until you're finished your experiment. I will now release the cart and you will see the data populate the charts as the cart moves by the sensors. Something important to note is if you don't see any data, you may need to check that your photo gates are adjusted properly. You may also have to set yourself up in an area that you're not in direct sunlight because sunlight could be affecting the sensitivity of the photo sensors. Don't forget to record your data after each pass. So in my first pass here with a 10 gram weight, I have 0 0.2. 282 for my V1 or, or sorry, my V0, my initial. And for my second one, I have 0 0.638. And my delta X in this case was 0 0.5 meters long. What you're going to do is you're going to now add another 10 gram weight and fill in your data for the 20 grams and then for the 30 and then the 40 to collect all your data. Once you're complete with all of that, you can tear down your equipment, make sure to remember to clean everything as you're putting it away, and then you can continue on with the rest of the lab using the data that you've just collected. Now that you've completed your lab, please don't forget to clean and sanitize all your equipment, including your workspace before you leave the lab. If you're doing this lab virtually, please ignore the data that's in the video because your instructor will give you actual data to work with in order to complete the lab. As always, if there are any further questions, please contact your instructor.